Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. It's been a few days since I made a video. Um, it was my birthday on the 1st, so I've had a few other distractions. Um, hopefully the sound is going to be okay here. I'm going to try not to make it too long. Um, but I, I think there's issues here that need to be raised because it's very, very resonant with the era that we're living in, particularly in the Western world where political correctness and other such issues are really, really at the fore of um, social dialogue. Um, what I want to talk about is racism. Now, racism is obviously not a new phenomenon. It's always been around, unfortunately. But one thing that is relatively new is just how casually and easily the taboo of racism is now, um, frankly, in my opinion, thrown around. Let me first of all say um, racism is a very real thing. It does exist and it is a problem in human society. Um, I've always been against the boneheaded idea that there is, that people can be defined by their skin pigmentation that's I've always been against the concept of any sort of pride in race. Um, as a white guy, I I don't see the point of it. Being white is not an achievement. It's not a point of shame either, but it's not an achievement. It just is. It's just like the sky is blue. It's just a fact. And it's something that you have no choice over. over. You know, you, you aren't born to be a race. So I think that that is very... Um, very obvious. To me, racism is basically holding animosity towards someone else for no other reason than their skin pigmentation. Sometimes it can cross into, you can get bigotry and xenophobia um, within a racial dynamic. So for example, let's say there was animosity towards East Europeans in Britain. East Europeans are predominantly white, um, so that isn't technically a racial dynamic, but it is nevertheless xenophobic, and it's a form of bigotry. And now racism has sort of been extended to mean that any sort of any sort of hostility towards outsiders. So in some ways, the term is being somewhat misused. Nevertheless, that doesn't mean that other forms of bigotry are any less serious. But I do think it's fair to say that of all the things that people can be accused of. There are few that are more taboo than racism. There are a few, um, for example, being accused of being a, a paedophile. That would probably be worse. Being accused of terrorism. So there's a few things that would be more damaging in terms of reputation. But the charge of racism is like wielding a knife at someone. It really is a very, very loaded and powerful term. I would say more so than homophobia or sexism, although those are also increasingly being taboo. Um, obviously, no one wants to be accused of any form of bigotry because, especially if you're innocent, because inevitably in the sort of era that we live in, it has implications. I do think, and I want to argue in this video, that it has become far too easy to smear and to... Uh, to label people as racist, um, in my opinion, that should be as taboo as racism itself. It should be as taboo to falsely accuse someone of racism and to casually throw that out as it is to be racist. It is right that racism gets um, negative connotations. It is right that genuine racism is challenged and exposed. But I think it has become far too easy especially, it has to be said, against white people. Now, the reason I'm um, saying against white people is because if a black person or an Asian person or a Hispanic person is accused of racism, yes, it's going to be negative to an extent. But when a white person is accused of racism, it is particularly damaging to their reputation. Why? Because white people are traditionally seen to be the, the power bearers for right or wrong, they were traditionally seen to be the social class that were most privileged. I think the term is actually very problematic. It totally ignores the many, for example, in the United States, many poor white Americans. But leaving that aside, um, it goes without saying that
that a white person accused of racism, the taboo is a lot greater than pretty much anyone else. Now, this is starting to change. Uh, only this week there was a black transgender model uh, claimed all white people were racist. And she has been punished for it, I'm pleased to say. So it's starting to turn, and there is starting to be more consistency, I am pleased to say. But until relatively recently, black racists, Asian racists, and Hispanic racists could get away with smears that white people would not get away with. That's clearly wrong. If as a society we are going to say racism is wrong, all I ask is that we are consistent. As a white guy, I will always, always condemn white racists. So when I see this white supremacist mindset, when I see white extremists coming out with their conspiracy theories about, well, about all sorts of things, about Jews taking over the world, about uh, the so-called white genocide, which is a complete nonsense. It's a complete misuse of the term. Genocide is a specific killing off of a race. So to use that in any sort of connotation with whatever legitimate debates are around multiculturalism is utterly, utterly absurd. Um, but basically what I'm driving at is it is far too easy to portray a white person as a racist. And even if people can see that it's nonsense, the damage is already done. And I think that's really, really unfortunate. One of the problems with this media age that we live in is that Someone's reputation could be destroyed within seconds. And it doesn't matter if that person is innocent and they prove that they're innocent and they prove that they've been taken out of context or whatever. The damage is done. And I think that's tragic. There's too many people out there who are willing to believe whatever they've heard about someone. And I think that we all have a responsibility when we hear something negative about a public figure, whoever they are, and whatever that charge is, we all have a responsibility to do further research and not just look at one source. Do further research and find out, well, is this really what they said? And is that really what they meant? Sometimes it is, because there are people out there who don't think, who, who really do have very ignorant views, and they, they are what they are. But more often than not, there are also people who really are taken out of context and who are vilified in such a way that is just unfair, that just doesn't summarise what the situation has actually been. As an example, you could have a situation where a black guy and a white guy are arguing about something. Now, that may be that they just personally dislike each other. But what race baiters will do is say, oh, the white guy's arguing with him because he doesn't like black people, plural. It might just be that he takes or she takes issue with that one person for whatever reason. They find them arrogant or they, they disagree with them or whatever it is. And the same principle applies. Just because a black guy is arguing with a white person doesn't mean that they hate all white people. But because we live in such an overly sensitive era, and I think the news media has a lot to answer for, the likes of uh, CNN and to some extent the BBC as well, there are times when they're reporting genuine racism, but more often than not, they really are race baiting. They're trying to find something in every single, every single act of digression, every single exchange. I'm not saying that it isn't legitimate to report racism. Of course it is, because it is a real problem. And I'm not one of these people that says, oh, it's all fake news. I don't believe that. The problem is there is a track record of stirring up animosity. I mean, I would suggest the Trayvon Martin thing was an example of that. In that situation, you had a Hispanic man who killed a black teenager, but the media managed to stir it all up as black versus white. And that should have been... One thing I have noticed, particularly in America, it happens to some extent in Britain, you get one situation which is a specific incident it then spirals out of control to produce this entire dynamic of one race versus the other. And it's, I think the media has a lot to answer for in that. I really, really do believe that they, they love race controversies because it gives them news, it, it fuels their agenda, which is to, let's face it, it makes great news. And 
this is not to say that it's all fake, that there isn't legitimate issues to discuss, but I think the media has to be very responsive how they go about this. And unfortunately, there are too many people out there, including so-called community leaders, that will want to find racism in every single situation. So you then get situations where I saw an interview on a talk show the other day, and this woman, a white woman, said that she was against sex um, she thought it was like what monkeys do. Now, there was nothing race, racial in her connotation. She was talking about people in general. But because there was a lot of black people in the audience, somehow they connected that with racism, even though there was also white people in the audience. If you're curious what I'm talking about, it was an interview with alleged vampires on the Tyra Banks show. So not even anything that should have had anything to do with race. Um, it's on YouTube. You can look it up. But there was this big gasp in the crowd like when she mentioned monkeys. Now, the woman was a bit, I thought she was a bit arrogant in her mannerisms, but that's beside the point. The point there was people were clearly looking at, I mean, I think race in America especially is still a very, very sensitive issue. And that's unfortunate. You know, in other parts of the world, there's taboo subjects that people are, won't discuss in Thailand. Anything to do with the royal family is taboo. Um, in in China, there's certain aspects of history. In America, it's race. And I think it's very sad that people cannot just have an honest, civilised discussion about race without it descending to the gutter, without people pointing fingers and saying, this person hates all black people or this person hates all white people. Um, I just think it's out of control. And I really, really, really have no respect for race baiters, people who go out of the way to find racism in every single situation. It really, really makes me angry because I think it just, rather than building bridges, it, it makes it a lot harder to have dialogue. And then that's a very cynical outlook because what what way is there forward? Because then you're going to have a situation where white people will be walking on eggshells because they're going to constantly think, am I going to be accused of racism if I disagree with this person? And... It's just, it's out of control. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood here. I am not for a second saying that racism doesn't exist. It definitely does. And there are very legitimate areas to discuss and debate. But I implore people, don't look at every single situation as, oh, because he was black, because she was black. It might not be the case. It might simply be that two people are having an argument, minding their own business, arguing among themselves, and then other people have stuck their nose into it and decided that it's a racial issue. And I just think that's very unfortunate and frankly a little alarming because it just breaks down any dynamic. Now, I believe that people who are motivated by racism, and that is people who constantly find racism in everything, can't have dialogue with them. It's a bit like certain feminists, I'm not talking about everyone, but certain feminists say uh misogyny in every single situation so if a man disagrees with them oh it must be because i'm a woman you know and th this goes across the board there are some white people who are also overly sensitive and think that you know like i say there's all these conspiracy theories about the so-called white genocide and so on and um, people just need to calm down and look at things on an individual basis i'm not saying that there aren't general social issues going on but Everyone is responsible for how they interpret things. And I think if you're going to point fingers at someone, you have to be prepared to back it up. You have to be prepared, if you're going to call someone a racist or a sexist or a homophobe, to back it up with clear evidence, not insinuations, not rumours, clear evidence. And it has to be actual racism. It can't just be they disagree with someone. Um, also, I think it's important to differentiate between racial hatred and, for example, what might be um, a somewhat insensitive joke, which I'm not condoning. But I, I don't think you can lump, for example, let's say a white supremacist gang beating up a black victim in the same category as, I don't know, um, a politically incorrect joke. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that that's another problem we have today where this very, very loaded term of racism is, I mean, if you look at the certain white liberals, they actually bring so-called cultural appropriation 
into the dynamic of racism. So in their line of thinking, if a white person likes black music, that's cultural appropriation. Therefore, it's racism. Therefore, that person hates black people. Now, logically, does that make any sense that someone who appreciates black music hates black people? That's how crazy this situation has become. And I understand the arguments, but I really think that this is something that is getting out of hand. And like I say, everyone has a responsibility to be honest, but also to back up their claims. Everyone. You know, uh, these big networks can't be trusted to, to be neutral. So it falls on individuals to be responsible for what they believe and what their perception of things are. And all I would say, I'm not asking people to agree with me, but I would just implore people to think for yourselves. Don't think as a white person, as a black person, as a Hispanic person, as an Asian person. Think for yourself as an educated adult who looks at the world and don't go on like, oh, I've had this bad experience with some white people, so I'm going to hate all white people, or vice versa. It's a nonsense regressive way to think. Judge people as individuals. This is common sense. And uh, I'll just conclude with this. I really do think that because the charge of racism is such an inflammatory thing to throw at someone, I think we should put increasing taboo on making the charge itself. And if it is a real thing, then it would be pretty easy to back it up with evidence to say, well, look, I'm basing this allegation on the fact this person has clearly said this. Like, I don't know, if a, if a white supremacist makes a statement that they think black people are inferior or whatever, that's clearly a racist notion. And it will be pretty easy to prove that. But some vague reference or vague rumour is not good enough when it could potentially cost someone's job, reputation, livelihood, and even subject them to potential violence. That's a real risk. And I, I think that people really need to be responsible. So thank you for watching and let me know your thoughts.